I am honestly surprised with how many of you responded to last week's video on Kaido and you mentioned that you wanted to see a video on how to use FFUF and I'm honestly not sure how I take this because I feel like there is enough content covering FFUF and I want to do that but I think I'm going to put a little bit of a twist on FFUF itself. For this video, I'm going to talk about what is fuzzing and use FFUF to fuzz faster and show you what fuzzing means and showcase the basic usage of FFUF. But if enough people comment part two in the comment section of this video, I will release an extended version of how to use FFUF and showcase one of my vulnerabilities that I found just purely by fuzzing a couple of directories and kind of piecing things together and show it to you guys on Wednesday. So do me a favor, if you wanna see that video, go in the comments, drop a comment that says part two, and I will promise to record that for Wednesday so you guys could also watch it all. So let's talk about what is fuzzing and just to have some fun, I'm gonna actually ask ChatGPT, what is fuzzing and hacking? And the answer is says, Fuzzing is a software testing technique that involves sending invalid or unexpected or random data as input to a program in order to uncover potential vulnerabilities or bugs, which pretty much means trial and error until you get something that's really, really interesting. In our case with bug bounty huntings, fuzzing comes into a lot of different aspects. It comes from fuzzing an API, fuzzing for directories and files, or even fuzzing for a valid ID or UUID or GUID that's going to potentially leak some data. So in short, fuzzing means just sending data, hoping to make sense of whatever it is that you're looking at. So with that, FFUF is actually short for fuzz faster, you fool, which it's kind of a cool name if you ask me. And it's one of my favorite fuzzing tools that I use. Again, you can use anything like WFuzz, DIR Buster. There are a bunch of tools like that that you can be using. If you want to let me know one of them that you like specifically that you want to see on this channel in the coming weeks, comment the name down below and I'll take a look at it and see if I want to make some content on it. You can also go as far as using Burp Suite with fuzzing and don't get me wrong, I use my proxy tools, whether it's Kaido, Zap, or Burp. A lot of times for fuzzing, you can use Intruder or Automate on Kaido and that also gets the job done. But in this case, we're going to use FFUF because a lot of bug bounty hunters love FFUF and I'm on that FFUF hype right now. So let's look at it really quickly. For this video, we're going to use FFUF.AM which is a lab created by Adam Langley. It kind of showcases how FFUF works and I'm going to walk you through how that exactly looks. So the first thing is you can go in here and download the basic word list. For this one, we're just going to uh, download these right here and drop them in our videos directory and let it download for now. And once it's downloaded, we're gonna go in here and look at just the basic discovery. So for example, in this case, we wanna look at basic. I'm gonna grab this without walking you through this exactly. I'm just gonna kind of show you how I look at a specific directory for leads. So the first thing we wanna do is we wanna make sure that our word lists are where we want them to be. In this case, it's in this videos file. These are all the different ones that I have. And we wanna take a look at fuzzing this specific URL. And how you do that's what FFUF is. You give it a dash U and you put the keyword fuzz for whatever you want to fuzz. In this case, I want to fuzz for a path right here, whether it's a file name or directory name, I leave that in that URL and I give it a word list. So in this case, we're gonna give it common.txt. So let's run this basic command and we'll take a look at what the other options are in just a moment. Once you run this, what it's going to do is it's going to run fuzz right here using that word list that we gave it and it's not gonna follow redirects. It's not gonna do any calibration. And if you look at the timeout and threads, it's all by default and the matcher is very important. I'll talk about that in just a bit. Matcher is going to just look at these specific response statuses. I don't like to use the default version of this because I feel like a lot of times it's missing some of the different response sizes that I wanna look for. So I'm gonna change that in just a bit, but you can see right off the bat, it's coming back and it's saying, hey, I found class and development log, two files that I've seen in here that are valid and we can actually take a look and open them. So for this case, if I wanted to take a look at this URL or this file that we found, I can just kind of do a curl to it and it's gonna say, hey, you have found this file. This is the point of this lab. It's just, you're gonna find things and it's gonna say that you found them, but you can see that this has been found and we can move on to the next section. And I'm gonna also highlight later on why this is important to change. So now let's go look at this lab again. We're gonna take a look at what does it like to do recursion and look at file extensions. In this case, we are going to look at recursion. And if you're not familiar with recursion, what happens is that whenever this tool is going to look for 
a new folder. So let's say it finds a folder called admin within recursion folder. What we do with the recursion flag is we tell it, hey, if you find a new folder, I want you to immediately look for more files and folders within that brand new folder. So kind of what it looks like in recursion and programming, any aspects of computers, it just recursively is going to look at each folder. So we're going to take this really quickly and this is the flag for it. We're going to attach it right here. And now as soon as we launch this, it's going to look for different directories. You can see it found admin and it's going to continue to go on recursion and look for all the different folders and files. And once it is over, it's going to start brute forcing for recursion dash admin dash fuzz and see what it finds within those folders. So let's give it a moment. It's going to do this thing. And it's going to come back and let us know what it finds. As you can see right now, really quickly, it's came back and said, hey, I found a folder or a path called users. And within users, I was able to identify 96, which is probably the ID for a user that exists within this. A lot of times what I see a lot of hackers do, sometimes including myself, I'm guilty of this, is that I take these folders and I don't even look at them. Or sometimes I do it manually. I go back and instead of putting recursion, I go and do admin or users one by one. You can do that. Sometimes you get probably a better cleaner output if it's a large website, then this is probably a better option to do. But off of default, if you don't know what you're looking for, I highly recommend looking at recursion and making sure it's recursive while it's doing directory brute forcing. Similar to looking for files, if you wanted to look for a specific extension, let's say a site is using PHP, ASP, or even JSP files, and you want to give it your common word list and add an extension to it, you can actually do this by adding the dash e flag and giving it the extension so in this case i want to look for log files i'm going to just give it the dash log or dot log extension against this flag right here it's going to actually take every word list from our comment.txt or every wording from our comment.txt and attach the dot log extension to it and see which ones are valid so we're going to run this really quickly and if you think this is too slow you want to make it a little bit faster you can give it the dash t and maybe double the number of threads so in this case i'm going to make it 100 and see how fast it's going to come back and give us the results as you can see it comes back and says hey users.log exists a lot of times it's really important to create word lists that are open to any extension so if you have the top 1000 or 1 million file names you take the extensions off you can dump them into your word list and then make it a one word list fits any extension and just slap that at the end of your flag and have it look for whatever you're looking for now let's take a look at looking for parameters and this is what i think fuzzing gets really really fun i'm going to quickly go to look for this and i want to show why doing the default matcher isn't a good idea with fff i'm going to just run this as it is with parameters being our word list and we're going to send it to this exact path and we're going to look for parameters and you can see right now the word fuzz is after the question mark which specifies looking for a parameter we're going to run this really quickly and you can see it comes back with a debug and the debug parameter actually exists. Oftentimes what happens is sometimes when you hit an API endpoint, it is not going to give you a 200. It's not going to give you a 403 or 401. It's going to give you something like a 415 or maybe 405, which means that the request or the method wasn't allowed. So in this case, if you're not doing your own match, in this case, obviously it worked, but in some cases, if you're not doing a match, it's going to miss out on those. So what I recommend doing is having a custom version of this. I honestly sometimes don't look at 403s, but it's not bad to have. Honestly, just having these 415 and 405s added to it, it's a great place to make sure you're extending your surface with this tool and making sure that you don't miss anything. So you can always see me by default. I add a bunch of different things right here and I avoid using the default version of this. But let's run this really quickly. It won't make a difference, but I want to kind of highlight that's one of the most powerful things you can do with FF. Uh, and it also and also I see a lot of times hackers are missing things because they are not properly using fuff or whatever fuzzing tool they're using to make sure they cover everything that's out there. Now let's take a couple of other examples of how you can fine tune fuff to work. So in this case, if I run this command by itself, again, remember we're not doing any 405s or anything else, it's going to come back and everything is going to come back as 402. Sometimes this happens because they have kind of configured the Nginx or whatever backend they're using to return a 200 for everything that's even invalid. So this is a custom configuration on the web server side and it's a way to just kind of throw these tools off whatever they're 
reasoning is that the developers have done it, but you can see everything comes back as status 200. So here you have two options. You can say that, hey, I don't want to look at 200 and only return 204, 301, 302. In this case, we may not get anything back because we still want to look at the status code of 200 because that's when things are actually valid and exist. So what we can do instead is we can keep 200 in here. So I'm going to actually add 415 and 405, 405 in here. Run it one more time. I don't think it's going to come back and show us anything. But what you can do is we can introduce the 200 back in the mix, but actually filter based on the size. You can actually say FS, which is filtered by size. And you can say, hey, I want to exclude anything that has a size 669. So if I pass this to it right now, it's going to do the same thing. You can see this time we have 200 in there, but it's not returning us any of this garbage that existed in the past. So right now it's looking at it. If it comes back and says, hey, FS or the file size is 2 or 699 don't show it to me it's going to actually just spit out whatever else is there you can also do that with the number of words so if the number of words is 126 we can do the same thing it's not going to show us anything it's going to filter them out and just kind of take care of it and just show us things that are valid and out of the ordinary but it gets even better a lot of times you will see me that by default I will run the dash AC flag. This kind of does a little bit of calibration, automatically looks for garbage like the previous ones. So in this example, as you can see on the screen, I have 200 still in the mix. It's looking for, it's matching for 200. But now I'm using the dash AC flag. And what I'm doing here is I'm telling it to not filter anything. And when I run it, it automatically is calibrating for us. You can see right here, calibration is true. And it's going to filter out things on its own immediately and only show us valid files that match what we're looking for. So you can also do that. A lot of times maybe the dash AC may not work or maybe the response size changes a little bit depending on how large your file name is. And it all honestly depends on the website itself. But I want to kind of make sure I highlight those to show you how you can actually calibrate and filter the garbage that comes out when you do directory or file brute forcing. All right, so I think this is a good place for us to stop. The reason why I'm making these basic content and video is I really wanna have a reference for a lot of this content to point the beginners to before we jump into our next chapter as this YouTube channel grows, which is kind of showing you guys more of the complex examples of vulnerabilities. But I feel like as a YouTuber, I've been covering a lot of the basics and I want to make sure I tell that story of becoming a better hacker by understanding the basics first before we jump into more of the complex vulnerabilities. So I promise eventually I'm going to probably slow down on making beginner friendly content. I'm not going to completely stop. I think a lot of these beginner friendly content is required for YouTube and I think it's a good place for beginners to learn. But I want to kind of start launching series that are more complex or show interesting vulnerabilities. That's not just the basic ones that you have seen or basic content that you have seen on this channel. So with that said, do me a favor, drop me a comment. I still want to make that part two. Let me know if you want to see that part two in the comments. And if you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Do all the liking and commenting. I will see you all on Wednesday. Peace.